This is well, the Krillcast. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. So, uh, time to cover some new topics. Mm-hmm. Well, we want to get started off with Halo Infinite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's some new uh, um, potential information out on uh, Halo Infinite. Uh, one of the bigger leaks or possibly true stories, I don't think it's not confirmed yet, um, is the large social modes um, that could potentially be coming to the game. Um, basically, the articles I've seen covering it are saying things sort of like Destiny, but with a Halo twist. So I don't, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, so the last time um, there was kind of a big multiplayer to do change with Halo, I would say it was back when they added Halo Halo 5. Halo 5, yeah. Okay, that's probably why. PvE, yeah, you don't play Halo 5. Actually, (laughs) in all honesty, I think Halo 5 is is so much better now than when it launched. I actually thoroughly enjoy playing it. Oh, I believe it. (laughs) But you know know how it's... Go ahead. It's like every game now, it's like, oh, wait six months and it'll be better. It's like... What happened just buying a game, popping it in, no install time, and just being able to play it. But it'll never be a commercial success. Mm. Right? No, it, no, might, it might play well. It might play well, but it'll never be a commercial success. Mm. And there's going to be some kind of open world component. I think it's all but confirmed at this point. Um, there's also rumors that they've spent uh, close to half a billion dollars on this game. <laughs> uh, most of, most of that will go into the engine build because they're they have the new engine. Well, yeah, Microsoft um, wants some engines to use for other games, not just Halo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're I think Forza and Sea of Thieves share the same engine, if I'm not mistaken, because I think they have the same ocean graphics. Uh, well, so I'm Forza not sure Horizon. how much you know about how much you know about game engines. I know uh, nothing. You know nothing about okay, <laughs> so. Treat me as a novice. Educate me, okay, Chris. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> game engines are basically the the motive force by which all things in the game interact, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the like it's even more important than the engine in your car in regards to video games. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's not more important than the engine in your car because that gets you back and forth to your place of work. But Who works, um, when you yeah. talk about an engine, right? The Unreal Engine Four. Mm. Um, lots of people pay to license that because it's so expensive to build an engine. Mm-hmm. And the longer you use it, mm-hmm. the less capability you have going into the future. The more caveats you have to make something work with your engine, the more sluggish a game is going to run because it takes excess processing power on top of what you already need to run the game to make these mm-hmm. things work. Right? It also it makes like, development more difficult as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it this way. You only got so much gas in the tank, right? Engine burns gas. So if your tank is full, and to run the game, it takes three quarters of your tank, but then to make all these caveats work, it takes another two quarters of a tank. Well, now you're at five quarters. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah. So well. building your own engine from scratch can take care of a lot of those things, but it's very expensive mm-hmm. and a well, lot that, of that's work. why it's, it's such a big deal for the hail engine to be new now because well you know most of the companies that build engines are like big companies with big budgets mm-hmm. so microsoft could do it i mean you know bill gates could probably fund it himself <laughs> yeah i'm just curious what other games are going to use that engine now because so probably sure... as many as they can battle mm-hmm. battle toads is that that's what's going to use it really it's going to be the much. best looking 2D skyscraper ever. Oh, man. <laughs> it's going to be photorealistic toads. They're going to actually have the slime and the warts and everything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, do you want to go to the next topic? Yeah, we can do that. We'll go. Our next topic is EA plus Disney, the partnership mm-hmm. that never should have happened. No. The partnership made in hell. Yes. So, EA, Disney, remember a couple years back, Battlefront coming mm-hmm. to modern consoles. Yeah. And it launched so with like five maps, no single player campaign, mm-hmm. and more DLC than anybody should ever buy, except for maybe the Train Simulator 2019, which has mm-hmm. over nine thousand dollars worth of DLC. Thank you, Sounds Jeremy, like from the quartering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, so EA is all about monetization. If they do not manage to make a profit 
having Disney as an exclusive contract with Star Wars, they're doing something wrong. Yes, they are. That is, I mean, even look at Solo. That made money just having Star Wars in the title. Mm -hmm. So EA plus Star Wars is a fail, right? Yeah, terrible idea. If Respawn cannot save with a single-player Star Wars campaign what has happened to the Star Wars franchise and video games and the LucasArts name, then nobody can with EA. If Respawn Entertainment cannot save Star Wars games with a single player, no multi, multi, no monetization game, mm-hmm. no one can with EA. Yeah, no, it would be an impossible task. I have full faith that Respawn is putting their best efforts in this. Um, I'm a little disappointed that you can't choose your main character, but I digress. Uh, yeah. But if, if I don't know, I'm actually worried about Respawn. I feel like if this game fails, they might just shut a Respawn. And I really like that company. I think so. Respawn and Bioware should merge with whatever good talent they have left and leave EA. They should. And make a different game than Mass Effect and Thumber Star Wars. That's a great idea. Yeah. And then <laughs> make it exclusively for Xbox. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they yeah. could join up with Bungie. Oh man, the trifecta. We need an actually be, uh, good and new IP. Is on, is honestly what we need for Star Wars. For just gaming in general. I just oh yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. like all the new IPs are either overly monetized or they just suck. Um, obviously, with the changing marketplace we have nowadays, games like Apex Legends can take the entire market by storm. Mm. And then fizzle out in like one month. And yep. I think I think what's got a lot to do with that is the extreme marketing that EA put in after it launched because it dropped completely silent, mm. and people picked up on it. Because since when has EA ever dropped a game silently? Mm-hmm. Never. Never. Well, it turns out EA had you know opened up their deep pockets and paid off a bunch of Twitch streamers to build up the popularity of the game artificially. Mm -hmm. And when you have artificial fame and glory, it does not last. No. The game itself, um, I have not played it myself, but I have watched a few videos. Well, then you can talk a little more than I can, but it looks pretty solid. It It looks solid for a Battle Royale game. I do not like Battle Royale games. It would never appeal to me, but it looks solid for a Battle Royale game. I think you actually might like it. Have you ever played the Titanfall games? Nope. Oh, well, you're lost then. <laughs> anyway, first of all, I love the Titanfall games. Second, Apex Legend does have really good gunplay. And it has a kind of a unique twist to the formula. I just think that the market's oversaturated with Battle Royale games. And it's kind of just like a game mode and not an actual genre. And there's right. only so many games that can actually occupy one genre. Well, yeah, I mean, especially when you got big players like EA and, and Activision trying to muscle in with Call of Duty and mm-hmm. Apex Legends. Not to mention that Anthem completely bombed out at the same time that An- <laughs> Apex Legends got yeah. really big really fast. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can't artificially build popularity and maintain it. It has to come from the player base. Yes. Which is why Fortnite survived Apex Legends, because... You can't convince a 12-year-old to try something new when they already love Fortnite. Yeah, and it's familiar, exactly. So they went back to what they're familiar with, which is why I play Halo every day still. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Trying to remember what I just started playing again. Oh, yeah, my Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country. Tune in on Krill Plays for Apex Legends. Uh, I think we're going to see more stuff like that. Maybe not from EA. They may have learned their lesson. Maybe. Probably not. uh, you're probably going to see more big name, artificially produced or artificially produced um, popularity come up now because the stockholders only care about day to day trades, which means when you have something like Apex Legends, do what no game has done before, allegedly, mm-hmm. um, it looks really good and people trade stocks, make a lot of money, and then it fizzles out slowly with a still pretty strong player base, which it does still have a consistent daily player base that's worth maintaining the game. EA, I'm looking at you. Um, so, uh, you know, keep turning a profit, keep making the game better. 
but you won't see that crazy success when it's built up on an artificial player base that was, you know, no. pushed heavily by EA on Twitch. Now, speaking of games that have built up over time, like Fortnite, and like, okay, Fortnite, I, I, I really don't have anything else to, <laughs> to put together right now. Although Halo was kind of like that in the beginning, right? Nobody knew what it was, mm -hmm. but everybody wanted Halo because everybody that played it was Halo. I think I read that Halo actually was number one on Twitch again. Probably because of the hashtag Halo Infinite. Yeah, well, it's because the MCC is getting updated. Oh, on, uh... yeah. it's wait Anything that makes it to PC that's on other systems is going to have a better shot at being number one. Mm-hmm because people watch it yeah and if you can play it on the computer it's way easier to do a let's play mm -hmm. you don't have to buy a 200 dollars elgato device to do all the captures you don't have to figure out how to make a game boy advance interface with a computer to be captured <laughs> because i don't even know if that's possible but i have a game boy player for my gamecube so there's that mm, nice <laughs> that does work mm -hmm. um or you can emulate but you know not authentic. Yeah, it's not exactly. That's <laughs> blasphemy. Blasphemy. So, you know, when you see these games that come up and kind of just build a fan base over time, like PUBG, for, there, there it is. There's another yeah, one PUBG, PUBG yeah. Fortnite, and then there's Minecraft, which has been building a player base for well over a decade now. Yeah, you can, can literally you play it? that on anything. You can play it on a brick. Anything. I can play it on my Vita. <laughs> Literally everything. You can play it on your phone. It's not, it's yeah. I have it on my phone. Maybe I'll let's play Minecraft. <laughs> Except that's the, that's the problem. Like, right, if you don't do a linear let's play, like mm. for something that's got to start and a finish, it never ends. Mm. So you just either do something, you know, with no aim or whatever, or you do something with an end. But if you do it with a, an aimless game like Minecraft, you can literally do it forever <laughs> and yep. never finish it as long as the views keep coming in <laughs> <laughs> so anyways um i think minecraft gets popular over time because there's nothing else like it prior to mm -hmm. minecraft nothing else existed like it there's nothing that you can be hacking away at blocks <laughs> I, there's just nothing like it and mm -hmm. over time you build this player base where you're, you're and they did it right, too, because they communicated with their player base over time. People found bugs. They immediately sent it to the Minecraft team. Mm -hmm. They fixed the bug, and everybody was back playing the next day, right? I mean, you had a consistent, around-the-clock team that was there for you. It, it kind of built it up like a family in the beginning with the Java edition. And then, over time, as you port things... As you know, Notch sells out to Microsoft for some billions odd dollars. <laughs> you get Microsoft, a company with more funds than about any other company, services mm -hmm. company. I mean, Apple's more of a hardware company. Samsung's a hardware company. services company, right? Microsoft's probably one of the biggest services country country company in the world, and they have tons and tons and tons and tons of money to back that up. Mm -hmm. So somebody like them picking up Minecraft, they can run with it. They don't have to. I mean, they can have a team that's like four or five times the size of Notch's team around the clock working on this game. Mm -hmm. And it's still bringing in the money. Yeah, it is. Definitely pay for itself. I also think that Minecraft, one of the reasons why it's so popular is it sort of is like the Wii of games. So it's really accessible. <laughs> it's like, like that's you said, true. it's aimless. So you don't have to worry, like stress out about beating the game. And you can just kind of jump into it whenever you want. Well, then there's, been a t there's been a ton of games that have built off of the success of Minecraft, mm -hmm. like Stardew Valley, mm -hmm. or um, Steam, Steam World, no, not Steam World, I can't think of what that one's called, it's like a side-scrolling, um, uh, ter Terraria? Oh, the yeah. yeah, I don't know if that's how you say it, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's something like that, and then, uh... Dragon Quest Builders. It's almost like Minecraft mixed with an RPG. It's super popular in Japan. Mm -hmm. But Minecraft on its own, right? That player base has been steadily growing 
and growing and growing. And I imagine it will overtake Tetris for the most copies of a game sold ever. And then the last topic was uh, our favorite LucasArts Star Wars games and whether we'll ever see games like that again. All right. Well, the second question, no. No, we will not. Um, I, I don't know what a good answer for that is other than the fact that companies just seem greedier. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you get pretty much MMOs, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and my favorite Star Wars games... Pod Racer on the 64 yeah. Yeah. and uh, Republic Commando. I love those games. That one was good too. And Rogue Leader was good. Rogue Squadron. I don't remember which one was which. Obviously, Battlefront, the original yeah. ones. And then uh, Star Wars Knights of the Republic 1 and 2. Oh, man. Yeah. So I can't put those on my list yet because I haven't beaten them. But I mean, <laughs> at least the very the first one is definitely shaping up to be an awesome game. The Lego Star Wars series is pretty good too. I did like those. Mm. Um, I also have this. Mm. It's like Age of Empires meets Star Wars. A whole campaign for both uh, the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. Mm. I think. I think it did. If you put some cheats in, you can play with the Death Star as one of your units, and it awesome. literally just obliterates everything. <laughs> yeah, you just type in the chat, Dutch No Moon, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Death Star! <laughs> just kills everything it's it's insane <laughs> you can pick this game up for like five dollars go on ebay I'm, I'm sure it's on there for like five or less i i think when i bought it it was discounted at a mire for like a dollar 99 nobody even knew it existed mm. um there's also uh the rogue squadron games yes those are good. Mm -hmm. Really good. I don't think there's any other Star Wars games I really like. There's so many good ones before they sold it to EA. Yeah, that is that is a fact. The Force Unleashed, I've heard, is really good, but I've never mm -hmm. played it. Force Unleashed is actually really good. I, I forgot about those two. Obi-Wan Kenobi one. I, I never even played that. I never even heard of that. Yeah, Kenobi, I think it's called. I like that. that Probably. Was I did have like a one-off lightsaber Hasbro game that was literally plug and play, and <laughs> it was fun, but the, the uh, replayability, yeah, probably nope. not good. But it was, oh, it was. Um, I forgot about my favorite one before you go on. Obviously, okay. Star Wars Connect is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> was, but yeah, I mean, Pod Racer. There was a second Pod Racer. Pod Racer, by the way. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it, but I obviously didn't play it. It's available on PS4. Mm. It's a PS2 classic. It's actually not as good as original Pod Racer. Um, it's called Racer Revenge, okay. and uh, they they removed like half of the Pod Racer crew. Oh. They removed half the maps. The whole, yeah, it's no, oh, that sounds dumb. It's like better graphics, better controls, but worse game. Yeah, it's like Halo oh, Five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> love, love, but duly yeah. earned. But, so I'm Chris. <laughs> and I'm Will. And we'll see you on the next Curlcast. I think they should uh, hire PewDiePie to play young Luke. I don't no. know where that came from. <laughs> Just got put PewDiePie in every video. That's all it is. No, that'll probably get edited out. Okay. So again, you can add whatever you want. What was your question? I missed that. There's no question. I was just saying. Well, how about this? Halo Sergeant Johnson edition. I would buy that immediately. No one wants to hear you speak anyway, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You can also get an Ewok with like six lightsabers sprouting out of its out of its body. <laughs> It's like the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, but it literally obliterates everything. You've sold me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the edits are going to be fun for this one. Yeah, sorry. End of the point, Will, where I'm just saying caviar and cigarettes. And we'll catch you on the next Curlcast. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a...
a family friendly podcast will. Oh, okay. That's Sorry. why I have to edit it. 